A very good evening aspirants welcome to Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar Reyes Academy for the date 21 of July 2022 Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today without any delay let's get into the article discussion See this editorial article this is about school health services the author is a primary care physician and public health specialist who has done extensive work on school health services In this analysis we'll discuss about what do we mean by school health the need to have school health services and approaches to it and some of the suggestions given by the author in this editorial but before that the syllabus relevant to the article is highlighted here for your reference please go through it first of all let us see what do we mean by school health see it refers to providing comprehensive preventive promotive and curative health services to school children Here the health services include medical care needs or physical care needs mental health needs and also age specific health needs linked to lifestyle issues Here lifestyle issues refers to unhealthy dietary habits irregular sleep lack of physical activity etc See such diagnostic and curative services should be provided in the school itself Exception here is the tertiary treatment which may be provided in the appropriate facility and know that appropriate gender based needs should also be provided such as appropriate sexual conduct behavior menstrual hygiene etc here who that is the world health organization states that school health services should be designed based on local need assessment it should have components of health promotion health education and screening leading to care referral and support as per the requirements see the objectives of school health services are given here just go through it and i have given the link between health and education in this image here go through this also now with this information let us discuss the need for having school health services see children they are the future of the country see they are the real healthy future only if they are physically and mentally healthy Here you should understand one crucial point. If we are able to identify their physical, mental and lifestyle problems at an early stage, then it will be relatively easy to address their health needs. Let us say for example, tobacco de-addiction and cessation efforts. They are far more successful if started in the school stage itself. So, early diagnosis leads to early cure and support. and as a result the duration of the pain is also reduced and more individuals will become healthy see this early diagnosis is very much needed given the enormous amount of physical and mental stress posed on children due to covid pandemic and from this we can say that it is time to have a comprehensive school health service now let us come to important approaches mentioned by the author in relation to school health services the author talks about fresh initiative approach see this approach consists of four core components they are health related policies water sanitation and environment skill based health education and health and nutrition services and please read about what they aspire to do under each component for better understanding i have given that here see how comprehensive the initiative is and know that the supporting strategies for fresh approach include effective partnerships between health and education sectors community partnership and student participation this is about the policy document released by unesco now let's go to the usa see the center for disease control and prevention advised that school health services should focus on four main areas they are acute and emergency care family engagement chronic disease management and care coordination and which region has best integrated the above approaches it is europe see in europe through an initiative called health promoting schools countries have successfully implemented these approaches now we'll come to the golden question why are we seeing these approaches here this is to study and take best practices from them and to implement in india maybe we can modify slightly to meet the local requirements to suit indian situation see some steps taken in this regard in india in 20th century has been mentioned by author which is presented here for your reference 
Now let us come to the suggestions of the author to develop, promote and implement the school health services. The first one is that a review is required on the status of school health services in all states and a road map is required to revamp and strengthen the school health services. This is the first suggestion. Secondly, the focus should be on comprehensive, preventive, promotive and curative services. See, health talks and lifestyle sessions should be a part of teaching. And this is the second suggestion. Third one is that school health clinics should be supplemented with online consultation for physical and mental health needs. And the fourth suggestion is parents should be included as an important stakeholder. This will promote accountability mechanism to strengthen school health services. And the fifth suggestion is school health services should take care of all school children both in private and government run schools. And the sixth one is the Aishman Bharat School Health Initiative should be properly implemented to meet all the objectives of school health services. See, the school health services under Aishman Bharat was launched in the year 2020, but its implementation is insufficient. So, what should be done here? Financial allocation should be increased and monitoring performance based on concrete outcome indicators is also required here. And the next suggestion is, Collective efforts in this regard are required from elected representatives, professional associations of public health and pediatrician from every citizen to shoulder the responsibility towards school health services. See a convergence of National Health Policy 2017 and National Education Policy 2020 is required. And this should result in the provision of comprehensive school health services in every Indian state. We saw that effective partnerships between education and health sector are a supporting strategy in Fresh Initiative. Likewise, the author suggests a convergence of national health policy and national education policy. And this should result in the provision of comprehensive school health services in every state. Here, I would like to add one more thing. There is also national children policy. This can also be converged with all these policies. The author also states that school health services is not given enough attention and only token services paid by governments in this regard. And this should change. See, school health services should move from nutrition and checkups to comprehensive health and from reactive to preventive. And with this, we have come to the end of the news analysis. And in this analysis, we saw what do we mean by school health and the need to have school health services and approaches to it and the suggestions given by the author. I suggest you to go through children related and health related provisions in the above policies. What are the policies that we saw in this discussion? We saw about national children policy, national education policy and national health policy. So in these policies, go through the children related and health related provisions. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now let us take up this news article for our next discussion. See, this news article talks about Tier 1 and Tier 2 capital. It is in news because yesterday the public sector lender, that is State Bank of India, it has received the board's approval to raise the capital by the way of issuance of Basel III compliant debt instrument in US dollars or Indian rupee. So in this backdrop, let us understand about Tier 1 and Tier 2 capital. But before that, you should know about Basel Accord. See, the Basel Accords refer to a set of banking supervision regulations set by the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. They were developed over several years between the year 1980 and 2011. And know that they have undergone several modifications over the years. Now, under this Basel Accord, a bank has to maintain a certain level of cash or liquid assets as a ratio of its risk-weighted assets. See here, the risk-weighted assets is nothing but the minimum amount of capital that must be held by a bank by assigning risk levels to each type of asset. So with this understanding, now coming back, the Basel Accords are a series of three sets of banking regulations, that is Basel 1, Basel 2 and Basel 3. And these three set of regulations, they help to ensure that the financial institutions have enough capital on hand to meet the obligations. 
Here, understand that Basel norms were developed over several years between 1980 and 2011. So, accordingly, Basel 1 was formed in the year 1988. It was created in response to the growing number of international banks and the increasing integration and interdependence of financial markets. Now, coming to Basel 2. Basel 2 is an extension of Basel 1. It was introduced in the year 2004. See, the global financial crisis of 2008 exposed the weakness of international financial system and it led to the creation of Basel 3 norms. And what was established by this Basel 3 norms? The capital adequacy ratio was established by the accords to specify holdings for banks. Now, let us understand what is this capital adequacy ratio, CAR. See, it is nothing but a measurement of a bank's available capital expressed as a percentage of bank's risk-weighted credit exposures. It is used to protect the depositors, promote the stability and the efficiency of financial systems around the world. And in this, two types of capital are measured. That is, Tier 1 capital and Tier 2 capital. This is what is mentioned in the news article also. Now, let us see them one by one. First of all, Tier 1 capital. It means capital that can absorb losses without a bank being required to cease trading. Now, what is Tier 2 capital? Tier 2 capital means capital that can absorb losses in the event of a winding up and because of this, it provides a lesser degree of protection to depositors. Here, you really don't have to memorize the formula. Instead, understand the terms so that it will be easy for you to remember. I'll give you one more additional fact here. Under Basel 3 norms, a bank's Tier 1 capital and Tier 2 assets must be at least 10.5% of its risk-weighted assets. It is a rise from 8% under Basel 2 norms. Now, that's all for this article discussion. With these key takeaway points, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now, let us take up this article for discussion. What it states, it mentions that China is planning to build another highway through Aksai Chin. So, from exam perspective, we are going to know about this highway and also the importance of Aksai Chin. First, know that this new highway planned by China is known as G695 Highway. It will be built along the line of actual control, that is LAC. This highway construction is among the 345 construction plans that is proposed by China in its new national program. Okay. Now, know that this highway spans from the Lanzai County in Tibet to the Maja in Kashgar. This Kashgar is in the Xinjiang province of China. So, that means the highway will be connecting Tibet with the autonomous uh, region of Xinjiang province of China. Also know that this highway is expected to run through several counties of China such as the Kona County, Kamba County, Gyorong, Burong and Zanda County. And it is said that parts of Zanda County are held by India. So now what is the purpose behind such a highway? See obviously it is to strengthen China's strategic position in the region. Mainly because the counties which we just saw are strategically important. Here, the Kona County lies immediately north of LAC and the Kamba County borders Sikkim and the Gyorong County is located near the border with Nepal and the Burang County, it lies between Tibet, Nepal and India. So, if the highway is going to pass through all these counties, then that means it will threaten India's sovereignty. There is also another concern for India, which is the highway is expected to pass through certain hotly contested areas such as the Depsang Plains, Galwan Valley and Hot Springs on the line of actual control. Especially, it is said that the highway will be cutting across Aksai Chin. So, that means the highway will be strategically a problem for India. So, this was about the highway. Now, let me tell you why Aksai Chin is important for us or what is the strategic position of Aksai Chin. Or what is the position of Aksai Chin in India-China strategy? See, actually, Aksai Chin is a barren, high-altitude, isolated and mostly uninhabitable plain. On its west and southwest, we have the Karakoram Range. And to its north and northeast, we have the Konlong Mountains. And since the 1950s, Aksai Chin is a disputed border area between China and India. We all know that. But you should remember, actually China controls Aksai Chin area, whereas India claims that it is a part of Indian territory. 
Now, what happened during the British rule was two borders between India and China were proposed. One is the Johnson's Line, and the other one is Macdonald Line. Now, here the Johnson's Line showed Aksai Chin in the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. That means it placed Aksai Chin under Indian control. So, if we follow the Johnson's Line, currently it would be in the Union territory of Ladakh. Now, the second one was the Macdonald Line. Now, this one placed Aksai Chin under China's control. So, simply India considers uh, Johnson's Line as correct, whereas China considers Macdonald Line as the correct one. So, currently both these lines are not actually followed, rather we have the line of actual control. So, based on these two lines, that is the Johnson's line and McDonald's line, India and China are currently contesting. But remember, the line of actual control is the line which separates Indian areas of Ladakh from Aksai Chin. And overall, China controls 38,000 square kilometers of land that is claimed by India. Now, why China wants Aksai Chin? Why it is strategically important for China? This is mainly because it links Tibet and Xinjiang province. And also because Aksai Chin is situated at high altitude and it is closer to Delhi. So this makes China an immediate threat to India's sovereignty. That means if there is a tussle between India and China, then China can rush its army to the heart of India, which is Delhi, in no time. In addition to this, the territory also helps China to check any possible incursion from Central Asia. So overall, Aksai Chin region acts as an unmanned Chinese satellite, keeping a watch over India's activities as well as all over Central Asia. That is why Aksai Chin is important for China. There is also another factor here. See, China is also providing a base for Pakistan in Aksai Chin. That means if there is a war between India and Pakistan, then this Aksai Chin will provide a leverage for China to exert pressure on India whenever there is a necessity. And that is why whenever there is a strategic plan of China, Aksai Chin holds an important place in it. And already China has built Highway 219 in this Aksai Chin region. And this Highway 219 is an all-weather road. It connects Tibet and Xinjiang. And this road is helping uh, China to move and mobilize its troops very easily to suppress any unrest. Now on these lines, another uh, highway is proposed. This will further strengthen China's side. Now, if that happens, then India will be in a much difficult position and India will be forced to strengthen its own infrastructure on Indian side of LAC. And that is why we need to know about the constructions along LAC or LOC. So, in this discussion, we saw many facts from the prelims perspective. Now, how can you use such kinds of information in your mind's answer writing? So, if in GS paper 2, you are talking about China's aggression in the region, then you can mention this as an example. And you can say how China is building its position along the LAC. So this is how you need to connect the dots. I hope you understood uh, major points in this discussion. Now let us move on to the next one. Now look at this small article. It states that yesterday Supreme Court has allowed 27% reservation for OBCs in all the upcoming local body elections in Maharashtra state. See this decision was taken based on the commission's report. This was a five-member commission headed by former chief secretary. It was appointed to collect the empirical data as per Supreme Court's mandate of the triple test. So this commission recommended that OBCs should be given up to 27% reservation in local bodies. So the Supreme Court accepted this report and now Supreme Court has allowed 27% reservation for OBCs in the local body elections in Maharashtra. So, from exam perspective, what we need to know is, what do we mean by this triple test? See, this triple test formula was initially laid down by the Supreme Court in 2010. It was laid down in the case law K. Krishnamurti versus Union of India case. In this case law, a five-judge constitution bench interpreted the validity of two articles of Indian constitution. These articles are Article 243D, Clause 6 and Article 243T, Clause 6. See, these articles permit reservation for backward classes by enactment of law. In this, the 243D one, it provides reservation in panchayats and the Article 243T, it provides reservation in municipal bodies. Okay. So these articles were interpreted in this case because it was questioned whether these articles are justified when we already have fundamental rights under Article 15 and Article 16. 
See, as you know, Article 15, Clause 4 and Article 16, Clause 4 provide reservations to socially and educationally backward communities in education and employment. So, considering these fundamental rights, along with the Article 243D and Article 243T, the Supreme Court held that providing reservations in local bodies is necessary and desirable for creating a level playing field. And due to that, the constitutional provisions under Article 243D and Article 243T was held to be justified by the Supreme Court. Because as I said, these two articles provide reservations for backward communities in panchayats and municipal bodies. So in short, in the case law Krishnamurti versus Union of India case, Supreme Court accepted the validity of these two articles. Here what the Supreme Court held was, even though these are valid and the reservation to local bodies is permissible, the state should prove the backwardness of the community before enacting a law. This was held by the Supreme Court. And to prove the backwardness, Supreme Court set three conditions and these conditions have to be satisfied to provide reservations under OBC quota. And these three conditions is what came to be known as the triple test. So what are these three conditions? First condition is the state must form a commission to inquire about the nature and implications of the backward quota in local communities within the state. So if you take the Maharashtra example, in that also a commission headed by former chief secretary was appointed. So this first condition was satisfied in the Maharashtra issue. Now, the second condition is, based on the commission's report, the state must specify the proportion of reservation in local bodies. That is, the state should mention the percentage of reservation based on the report of the commission. So, in the Maharashtra example, the commission recommended 27% reservation. So, the same was agreed by the Supreme Court also. Now, the third condition is, total reservation must not exceed the aggregate of 50% of the seats. This criteria was also adhered in the Maharashtra example. So these are the three tests that have to be satisfied to provide reservations under OBC quota in panchayats and municipal bodies. And this was held by the Supreme Court in the case law Krishnamurti versus Union of India. And when the conditions are satisfied, the reservation can be provided by enacting a law. This is what you need to understand from this discussion. Now, with these points in mind, let us move on to the next part of the discussion, that is the practice prelims question discussion. Today, we have four prelims questions. I'll solve three of them and one of them is a quiz question for you. Now, let us take up this first previous prelims question for solving. It was asked in the year 2015. It says that Basel 3 Accord or simply Basel 3, often seen in the news, seeks to Option A, develop national strategies for conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. Option B, improve banking sector's ability in handling the economic stress and improve risk management. Reduce the greenhouse gas emissions but places a heavier burden on developed countries. Transfer technology from developed countries to poor countries to enable them to replace the use of chlorofluorocarbons in refrigeration with harmless chemicals. See, this is a very easy question. We saw in the discussion itself, Basel 3 Accord is related to banking sector. See, option A is related to biological diversity. So, we can rule out that option. Option C is related to greenhouse gas emissions. So, that is also not the answer. And option D is related to transferring of technology related to the use of chlorofluorocarbons. So, this is also not related to Basel 3 Accord. So, what is the correct option here? The correct option is option B which says that Basel 3 norms seeks to improve banking sector's ability in handling economic stress and improve the risk management. Now coming to the second question, consider the following statements. 102nd Constitution Amendment Act provided constitutional status to the National Commission for Backward Classes. This statement is correct. 102 Constitutional Amendment Act 2018 provided constitutional status to National Commission for Backward Classes. Previously, National Commission for Backward Classes was a statutory body. It functioned under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Now coming to second statement, 
Hundred and fourth Constitution Amendment Act extended the reservation of seats for SCs and STs in the Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assemblies. See, this statement is also correct. Hundred and fourth Constitutional Amendment Act ceased the reservation of seats for Anglo Indians in Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assemblies, but it extended reservations for SCs and STs in Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assemblies up to ten years. So, what is the correct option here? The correct option is option C, both one and two. Now, let us take up this third question. The question says the word triple test recently seen in news is related to drug for lymphatic filariasis, fitness test for cricketers, reservations for backward communities, bifurcation of states. So, if you have listened to the discussion carefully, it is easy for you to find answer for this question. We all know the correct answer to this question is option C, reservations for backward communities. Now, taking up the last question, which is the quiz question for you. See, it is a map-based question. Take a moment, think carefully and post your answer in the comment section. I have given a mains question here for your practice. So, interested aspirants, write it and post it in the comment section. If you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today, post that also in the comment section. And with this, we have come to the end. If you find the video useful, like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankara's Academy's YouTube channel for further updates. Thank you.